Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Provost, it is both a privilege and a pleasure to present to you our honorary graduate, William Dalrymple. Author, scholar, and co-founder of the hugely successful Jaipur Literary Festival, William has been recognized for his outstanding contributions to writing and television on a huge range of topics with numerous awards over the years. He has received the Duff Cooper Memorial Prize, the Grierson Award, and the extremely prestigious President's Medal from the British Academy, to name just three. He has curated exhibitions and has the, I believe, unequaled record of receiving a literary prize for every single one of his 10 books. His works look to the past, both his own families and this union of nations, involvement with Central and South Asia in order to understand the present and to create a better and more informed future. This commitment aligns with the University of York's goal to be a force for good through a combination of research excellence and innovative teaching. William's life and work are imbued with these two strands in his erudite scholarship that is accessible to all. Born in 1965, William went to school in Yorkshire at Ampleforth before going to Trinity College, Cambridge to read history. He has been based in Delhi for over 30 years where he and his wife Olivia have raised their children with extended periods of time in Scotland and he has also traveled extensively. He has done more than anyone to shine a light on the rich, complex and multifaceted nature of British involvement in the Indian subcontinent and Afghanistan over the last two centuries. His books are particularly important as they draw on not just the British sources and perspectives, but also the Mughal, Afghan and Sikh sources, and in doing so, create a far more comprehensive view of a past that so heavily informs the present. It's hard to single out any one of William's works, but I think that given the ongoing crisis in Afghanistan and the recent British involvement in the war there, the third volume of his company quartet, Return of the King, published in 2014, is perhaps the one that is best to mention here. Awarded multiple prizes, it presents the history of the first British-Afghan war from the perspective of both the invader and the invaded, through the use of numerous previously unpublished sources from as far afield as Kabul, Lahore, London, and Moscow. The book is the preeminent history of this first phase of what was to become a tragically long Western military involvement in Afghanistan, and will no doubt remain so for several generations. As the University of York continues to develop and expand the capacity to teach and research the history and material culture of Central Asia, Iran, and the Indian subcontinent, it is really exciting to highlight the links between what we do here and what William has dedicated his career towards. He is the co-founder and co-director of the Jaipur Literary, uh, Literature Festival, which is an egalitarian, free, and now international series of events that has run since 2006 and chimes directly with the University of York's ethos of acting for the public good. William has an increasingly close relationship with the University of York, and last year he generously agreed to give the inaugural Bruce Hornell Memorial Lecture, held here in York annually in honor of a dear and mutual friend who sadly passed away in 2020. Deputy Bryce Chancellor and Provost, for his years of scholarship and work to interpret the past and build a better understanding for the future relationship between Britain and India, it is with great pleasure that I present to you William Dalrymple from the degree of Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. Invested in me by the University of York, it's with great pleasure that I confer upon you the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. I spent the first 10 years of my education in Yorkshire, and it was bicycling around the North York Moors, looking at monuments such as Revo and Byland, and bringing uh, professors from York University, such as Philip Ratz uh, and Martin Carver, uh, that started my interest uh, in archaeology and history. 
And um, I've just loved hearing all the different uh, PhDs that you've all been um, so brilliantly working on, and seeing how particularly archaeology seems to be developing in extraordinary new directions. It's incredibly inspiring. I ended up coming back to York a lot uh, over the last 20 years, working on these four books on the East India Company. And the key to understanding that lay in the city with, uh, with Richard and I's mutual friend, Bruce Winnell, who's one of those people who had the gift uh, of an extraordinary year. This meant that he could not only play Schubert and sing, uh, so play Chopin and sing Schubert uh, as well as Persian Guzzles and, uh, and Winterreiser and every imaginable uh, form of opera uh, or Monteverdi he could sing. He also had the gift of languages. He seemed to know every European language, but also had good Arabic and completely perfect Persian. And he had enough uh, of modern Indian languages that he was able to understand the different forms of Mughal Persian, which often contained uh, a lot of Urdu or, or Pashtun or, uh, or Punjabi, uh, and would be able to read Mughal Persian texts, which is really a lost language now. No one speaks this anymore. And Bruce could read it as easily as you or I could scan the front page of The Guardian. Uh, and he had this ability to work through pages and pages of Persian text with, not always with great speed, but with great accuracy, and uh, would produce uh, the wonderful translations in incredible prose. The story we were working on is one of the darkest in history. It's how one corporation had quartered in one office in a London street, an office only five windows wide, considerably smaller than this hall, was able to use credit and buy mercenary troops that allowed it to conquer what was then the richest country in the world. The Mughal Empire generated about 40% of the world's GDP at a time when all of England produced between about 5 and 7% of the world's GDP. And it was this bizarre organ which resulted in the wealth of India draining often in very nefarious ways, into this country, enriching us as efficiently as it paupered India. And it is the story of a corporation. It's the story of a business enterprise. I was always taught at school that India was conquered by the British or the British Empire. It wasn't so. It was a corporation that was run for profit, uh, had a share price, had uh, annual general meetings like any corporation. Uh, and it is the greatest story of corporate violence in world history. Over the 20 years that Bruce and I worked on this, and Bruce translating volume after volume of these Mughal records that had never been read before from the late Mughal period, uh, two things happened. In the world, we saw the birth, again, of massive multinational corporations, which were richer than whole continents. Google, Apple, Facebook, Twitter. ExxonMobil. These were companies that barely existed when we began work in the late uh, 1990s, uh, but which over the course of those 20 years c came to command sums of money that whole continents were not able to put together. At the same time, there was a growing awareness in this country of the damage that colonialism has done around the world and the way in which this country has been responsible for uh, eviscerating and asset stripping uh, great swathes of the world. Uh, so in memory of Bruce, I would be delighted and, and very honored to accept this uh, honorary degree. Thank you very, very much. And I'll just end with a quote from the Lord Chancellor as he put Warren Hastings on trial in Westminster Hall in the impeachment of Warren Hastings, the one occasion when Parliament held the East India Company uh, to account, though in many ways they chose the wrong person to, uh, to take down. And the words, I think, ring just as strong, if not more so, today than they did in the 1780s. He said, corporations have neither bodies to be punished nor souls to be condemned. They therefore do as they like. Thank you very much.